Hello, it's another part of Endzone Trilogy Crash 1. This time we'll be going through some more levels. First of all, we're not going heavy machinery because that's the level we're focusing on right now. We're focusing on a level that we just unlocked for fucking key, which is Whole Hog. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Because I skipped it last part because I was going to do it this part. And it's a good thing because the last part was like 30 fucking minutes. This isn't. So, I got the time for it, and besides, this trail is pretty short, so, we're best off just doing it this way. So, Whole Hog, it's the second and the last of the hog levels. Okay, okay then, okay then, that, that's, that's neat. And by the way, yes, you can jump over this guy, I couldn't do it here. But in the time trial, I could. And I was surprised, because I'm pretty sure you can't actually jump over that guy in the original. In this, though, you can. And it's actually that hard to actually jump over him. It's actually kind of easy, so... I can skip one guy. Oh, and there's another problem. The jumping on the barrels. The fucking drums, I mean. Uh, it doesn't work. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hold the jump button and you'll go your highest from that and you know that's how it usually goes and it is supposed to work. It doesn't for me. I'm holding the X button every time and for some fucking reason it's never going high enough and I just either fall into the fucking trap or I go in the pit. Sometimes like that where it's actually doing what's supposed to fucking do and sometimes it's just like this. And I'm like, okay, I can't go to the left, it's too, it's too out there, it won't make it. So I go for the middle, because I'm pretty sure I can make that. And then, my ass. My ass gets in the way. Of course. So now I'm going for the right side. Oh, there's no fucking way this can fuck up. There we but also I went for the middle again, and it worked. And then I jump over the fucking drum. Great. I'm showing you every fuck up for this one, because I just want to, like, show off... How awkward the hog levels are in Crash 1 for me. Like, once again, it's random on how high my height is. That should have that should have worked. I should have made it. But no. This game does not want to act nice. It does not want to act with any sense. It just wants to be a dick. So, of course jumping in the fucking hog stage is going to be awkward and not work correctly for me. Because when I hold the X button, either it's going to give me the height or it won't. And I don't know if it's because of where I am on the drum or anything. It's just really acting awkward and I hate it. Oh, there's a weird glitch. <laughs> oh, that, that always gets me. Uh, that's such a good one. I can't recreate that. So I'm glad it's recorded here. I'm glad you're seeing it now, because that's the funniest fucking glitch I have seen thus far. And that's the funniest glitch I've ever seen in Crash 1, period. I have not seen a single Crash 1 glitch after that that was, uh, fucking funny. And I have already recorded everything on Crash 1, so, yeah. My fucking god, that... That's hilarious, really. Just... Crash hitting the wall of the house after getting bumped off the hog and just flying right off fucking screen. I don't even know how that happens. I don't even know what logic is there for that to happen. But there you go. Now we're going for the actual path heavy machinery. Now, the... I'm calling them the factory levels, because that's what they sort of are. Heavy Machinery and another level that's factory level. I don't really like these levels because of one particular enemy. Like, later on, these sort of levels, they, they have a particular enemy I don't like. And there! There it is! These motherfuckers appear in Crash 2 as well. They reused them. I hate these fuckers 
with the saws on the middle that are sideways and have cameras poking out from the top of them. I... I don't know why they thought that was a great fucking enemy. They are like the hogs in the bridge levels. You can't kill them unless you have a mask. And then you can take a hint, a hit, and you know, they die. But you have to take the hit in order to kill them. So it's not worth it. Also, I had to go right above this box here. I couldn't, because you have to be at the very edge of it, and the hitboxes are just weird, so it wasn't worth it in the end. But, yeah, these fucking enemies. I hate these fucking enemies. They're in Crash 2 as well, and they are actually sort of worse in Crash 2. In Crash 1, they're in some shitty places, but you have some room and some opportunity to get past them. That is less of a fucking fact in Crash 2, because sometimes you have barely any fucking room. And this is a fact when you're trying to go through the tunnels in Crash 2, and there's like lava below them, and you have barely room to make a good jump on. And it's just like, it's a big fucking gap because of that. It's a really tough gap. Also, gas. Only appears in Crash 1. Thank God they're not in Crash 2 or 3. But yeah. This... This is quite a level. Especially with the gas. If you're doing it normally, the gas is nothing. You just wait. And then, there you're done. But... Considering the relic thing, if you're trying to speed run this level and such, the gas can pretty much fuck your runs up, because they're usually timed in a way in which you are kind of forced to wait. So you need an Aku Aku mask in order to actually get past this bullshit. You're just sort of required for that. And with the relics, you lose your Aku Aku mask when you start the relic challenge, when you start the time trial. So... Unless it's an Aku Aku mask beforehand, you have to basically wait or find a way around it. And sometimes there is a way around it. Sometimes, and that's most times, there isn't. Like right here. And right fucking here, because watch what happens here. There you go. Their hitbox is a bit unforgiving too. You can't let really jump over them because they're like the fire. Their, their hitbox is very big. And unfair and stupid. You can die by not even touching them. And also, I'm about to kill a baby. I just killed a baby. I'm a baby murderer. Thanks, Crash One. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and just get more of these crates. Which is another thing. Another thing about Crash One uh, that is interesting. And what makes this Crash One so much easier than the actual Crash 1, and what actually, what you'll find out later, makes Crash 2 the hardest fucking game out of all of Insane Trilogy. People worry about Crash 1 being the hardest, and for certain levels like the High Road, which we'll get to next part, like right when next part begins we'll get to that, but, some levels like that, you know, people will have a problem with that and they'll struggle with. Oh, by the way, this level. A small few will try to do this. I'll try to go for that question mark, uh, that exclamation mark right there. Don't. The way this works is you follow a trail. And you follow the trail the entire time. And sometimes, sometimes the trail is kind of hard because you go up that screen you can barely see where Crash is. Because the shadow sucks. Because you can barely see the fucking shadow, really. And even though it's on the sides as well, it's so awkward and shit that it's not that useful in any way. Like, it's a little bit glitchy on the sides, too, so it's not good. They can get the bloom and the lighting right so well, but they can't get shadow right for shit. Oh, and by the way, Brio stages, Brio bonus stages are always six lives in the end. So, yeah, I'm back to 99 again. And, uh, yeah. Let me just... 
talk about why Crash 2 is now the hardest in Insane Trilogy. Because Crash 1, if you are actually doing good, is very forgiving life-wise. You can get 99 lives, no problem in Crash 1. They give you a fuck ton. In fact, one of the gem paths is literally about like 40, 50 fucking lives in a line and then the exit. You skip the entire fucking level, but you get 40, 50 lives out of it. I'll be showing that later on as well, but that's to show how forgiving Crash 1 is on the lives. But you also need to remember that Crash 1 originally, you can't keep your crates to die. If you die, they reset. And you can't do the bonus stages a second time. You fuck up once, you can't do it again. The tokens are gone, and you have to leave the level and redo it in order to do the bullshit again. So when you got that in your fucking mind, when you know that shit, it really comes to the question of, is Crash 1 really difficult? And the answer is no, but they made it difficult. By the way, nice little intro for Cortex Power. There you go. They made it difficult because of all the bullshit that they have removed in Insane Trilogy. Oh, by the way, here's a death. Gives you an achievement. There are two die achievements in this game. Ice Lunar Icy France gain electrocuted. The second one is actually gained in by the Piranha Plants which I avoided doing. I will do that in the time trials. That or the gems, I don't remember. But, yeah, I'll be doing that on one of those spots. And trust me, you might as well just go for it because with Crash 1, there is very little worry about lives. Because even if you start getting very low on lives, you can redo a stage of like Rio stage, like a, a, a fucking le level that has a Rio bonus level, and you can like redo that over and over again, and you can constantly get six lives out of it, and it's like extremely forgiving. And Brio bonus stages are always forgiving when you actually get through them, you understand how they work, because they always give you six lives. Even if you've been them, they give you six lives. Look at this. Those were just question mark blocks and they gave me fucking a life. They weren't life boxes. So, Crash 1 is forgiven on that end, but at the same time, originally it's not. It's very unforgiving and it's the hardest of all of them. Crash 2, very unforgiving life-wise, but gameplay-wise, it is fucking easier than Crash 1. So, the chances of you getting a game over are slimmed down because it's easier. Insane Trilogy has changed that. Because they made Crash 1 extremely easy in a way because of the whole, you know, you can save anywhere thing. The bonus agents can redo them into like a fucking portal. And... The whole fucking box thing. The fact that boxes do not reset upon death. That has made Crash 1 so fucking easy. That this Let's Play is showcasing that even though I fuck up and die a lot. And I do shit at the boss and such. I can still be at 99 lives. And I can still make it through this level relatively well. And I can still 100% it, no problem. So even if I fuck up at things like River Room and such, it doesn't matter because in the end it's just gonna be a joke anyway. It's just gonna be nothing. Because then you'll go through a level that is supposed to be difficult but now it's easy because of all the bullshit that was removed. And yeah, by the way, nine lives were in the gem path, the blue gem path. Which, speaking of blue gem, and also if I, I believe either orange or yellow gem, orange, orange gem, that's right, this is one's orange. We're about to do colored gems again. In fact, we're about to do two in a row. 
because after these two gems is the boss. So, generator room, orange gem. Both this and the next level, which has the blue gem, we have to get through them without dying with every box. Generator room took me a while. In fact, I lost about seven lives in generator room. Those those little cortexes there are kind of awkward compared to the original. But then again, the original weren't that great either. It's just like his face is kind of zooming in a bunch. His face is actually moving here, but still, it's so weird and awkward. It doesn't make sense. And I die because, you know, bad jump, bad positioning, everything like that. And I have to reset. And I'm doing you a favor by giving you the actual successful run. By the way, you have to wait a bit before you can actually quit and do this again. It's stupid. So, generator room. This one's an interesting one because this is this is the level that is well known for having a bit where the fucking ending to the level is right next to you and you can't go there because of an invisible wall and because if you go for the bit below you you fall right through the right through the floor down there you can't stand there. There is no fucking solid platforms down there if you're up there. But if you're down there, it's solid. It, yeah, right fucking there. The exit, the where's the exit? Very close by to my right. That checkpoint there? We would have skipped like half this level by now. If I went right right now. But I can't, because there's an invisible wall there, and there's also the bit down below where the checkpoint is as well, where the moving platforms are. I can't fall down there, because I go through that shit. I go through the railing, through the floor down there where the boxes are, and I die in a pit. So, generator room is just sort of weird in design, and... It's obvious, it looks like you can actually cheese the fuck out of this, you can cheapen the fuck out of this level. But in order to make sure you can't, they play this stupid bullshit of visible walls and going through the fucking floor. In order to make sure you can't skip shit. And that you go all around this fucking circle before you get back over here. It's dumb. And it only gets worse when you have to go and do this gem. Now, granted, if you're doing the gem, you have to go around it anyway because the box is there. But if you're just going for the level, this is sort of a waste of time. And when it comes to doing, you know, fucking speedruns of this shit, when it comes to the relic of this, like, you could save so much time if you could, but they don't want you. So, yeah. Oh, and there's one bit, there's a platform at the end that I could just go up to and then just jump over the gap and then get to the last boxes in the end. But I didn't want to risk it, so I just went for the platform that's moving. And yeah. There's the orange gem, that is it. And while I'm at it, the orange gem only appears in Crash 1. Crash 2 and 3 have five colored gems. Crash 1 has six. And Crash 1 had an orange gem. As far as memory serves me, the orange gem is only in Crash 1. They never bring up the orange gem again. Unless Twin Sandy had the orange gem, I'm pretty sure it didn't. Anyway, Toxic Waste. This is where the blue gem is. And I'm saying it right now. This is the easiest one of all the color gems. You should not die once in this level if you're taking it slow. Because they give you so many advantages to make it through without dying. And 
all the boxes straightforward, so it's extremely easy. By the way, this fucking music of toxic waste. Like, there are many things I could think of for the song of how you can remix this shit, how you can remaster this. Rock? This sort of rock. I would never think of putting this sort of genre for this song, for this level. By the way, the barrel is just sliding back into place when you kill the guy. That's just weird. Anyway, he comes jumping barrels now. The jumping barrels, okay, maybe they're a bit confusing. Maybe you'll have difficulty with them, and maybe you'll get hit by them, like that. They have a weird timing to them, they have weird positioning. Still, that should not be a big problem. If you're speedrunning this fucking level, though, the barrels are going to be your problem. And it's gonna be the jumping ones. The bouncing barrels in speedruns can be a fucking asshole. And also this bonus. I'll get it if you die here once. Because the way this works, you might not get the first time. Because you people are stupid sometimes. What you have to do is you bounce on the TNT and then you run and you spin. You don't jump. You might be thinking you're gonna hit the TNT box and explode them. You're not. I know. That doesn't make much sense considering how finicky the TNT boxes were in that Rio stage. When I was jumping up on the TNT box on the fucking stairs of it and trying to hit those boxes on top of it and all. That's just how it works, okay? And now I got the blue gem, so... That's half of all the colored gems now. Three remain. Which is the purple, the yellow, and the red. So, now it's time for a boss. Told you, it wasn't many. There wasn't many fucking levels in this. Now it's time for Pinstripe Potoroo. Who is interesting. Because... He is the only motherfucker with a gun. Not a flamethrower, a gun. This would make him pretty difficult and pretty, you know, dangerous. Because he can kill you in one hit like that. If not for the fact that Potoru just acts really stupid with his fucking gun. He doesn't go around to the chairs where you're hiding. Instead, he doesn't even do go in any fucking cover. He's just walking around his fucking desk and being an idiot with his fucking Tommy gun. What should be a rel relatively fucking difficult boss fight considering what you're dealing with is extremely fucking easy because Potoru is stupid with his fucking gun. Real Mafioso bosses will look at Potoru here and just just be really disappointed in disgust at how stupid he's been. Like, I get it, he's not supposed to be the hottest boss in the game. Cortex is. But this is kind of disappointing to see that this is how the boss is handled. And Potoru doesn't really come back. I mean, he's referenced a few times. But Potoru doesn't come back in later Crash games. Like in Twin Sanity, he's referencing like a few, like a fucking cutscene and such. Never a boss. It's kind of sad to see that Potoru is just like... Not really given much love. As much as I bet his boss fights will be much better after this. But yeah, he's dead now. Mark is knocked out, and then Glash just drops on his fucking head. So, yeah. That was a super a trophy name, and that was a kind of disappointing boss, really. 
He could have done so much more with that Tommy gun, but instead he acted like a complete not a fucking retard. And that was Pinstripe, and that was his part. So now we're literally going straight for Cortex. Because after this is Cortex's base. And yeah, there's the high road. Oh boy, do I have some shit to say about the high road. But I'll do that next time. So thank you for watching. Next time, we're going to go for the high road. And we're going to get some more gems and such. Thanks for watching. See you then.